Welcome to CCFR's Canada Downrange. Sport shooting is the most exciting and least covered sport in Canada. Come with us as we travel across our great nation to discover the coolest events, amazing locations, and the most interesting people. Today on CCFR's Canada Downrange, we head to the Calgary Shooting Centre where we will learn about a variety of firearms and their specific restrictions. Then we will get to see part two of Project Maple Seed as the participants are taught the techniques needed to improve downrange accuracy. The Calgary Shooting Center is a world-class training facility that offers instruction to those with no previous training as well as the expert marksmen. At the facility, there is a dedicated classroom for teaching and an indoor range to practice those skills. This is where Rod and James discuss the current restrictions and classifications of various firearms in Canada. Today they will be reviewing three classes of firearms, non-restricted, restricted and prohibited. This is a selection of handguns that I brought out just to make a point. In this case, we had a bunch of legal beagles at the Justice Department who were tasked with prohibiting a bunch of handguns. They decided that the only determinant of size in a handgun was barrel length, which is ridiculous. It's equivalent to saying that the length of your engine in your car would determine how big the car is. Because once again, prohibited class means this is a gun that is just too dangerous to have circulating around in our society. The idea that the barrel length should play a part in that is insane. If you are concerned about the size of a firearm, making it uh, more concealable or not, why would you not be concerned about the overall size of the firearm? We, we have a law that says that this gun, this is the uh, Glock 19 Canadian edition. Although it is smaller in every dimension than these two guns, is restricted while these two guns are allegedly more concealable and therefore must be prohibited. It's a prohibited handgun due to barrel length. This is a Smith & Wesson Model 66 with a four inch barrel. And this is a German P08 Luger, nine millimeter. It is a prohibited handgun due to barrel length. This gun here is the only one that if it, if it was in the possession of a, a licensed owner in Canada, could be inherited by someone in his immediate family. It's unfortunate they weren't applied to other firearms of historical significance that are being prohibited. This is a Ruger Mini 14. I guess you could say it's the gun that started it all as a result of a mass shooting in the 80s uh, that involved the Mini 14. The government started uh, prohibiting and restricting other rifles. So although this rifle was used, these rifles down here ended up getting prohibited and restricted. And, f and for whatever reason, the Mini 14 is still there, non-restricted in its original configuration. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca. The Calgary Shooting Centre offers the Canadian Firearm Safety Course and can start you on the way to getting your own firearm license. 
Even if you don't have a license, the expert staff can provide training and supervision as well as a large selection of firearms that are available for rent. This is a Canadian FN C1A1. It's a Canadian military rifle that was used uh, from 1958 to about 1986. Okay, now this is prohibited. The Canadian government has prohibited and restricted the, uh, the C1 rifles almost from day one, primarily because of the ease in which they were uh, able to be converted to fully automatic. And this is an M1A1 Thompson submachine gun. Uh, this is a converted automatic uh, gun that is currently prohibited in Canada. This is an Uzi Model B 9mm carbine, currently prohibited in Canada. So it was built as a semi-automatic carbine. When it was prohibited, the Canadian government put it in a class 12-4, uh, more or less by itself. So it's just a really bizarre idiosyncrasy with how the guns were classified in Canada. That's heavy, that's heavier than it looks. Right, but all, all the weight is balanced. This is a uh, IWI TAR-21 5.56 millimeter rifle. It's non-restricted in Canada. Magazines loaded behind the, the pistol grip. That results in a lot of dimensional reduction as far as the shooter's concerned. So here we have a, a pretty short firearm. It's non-restricted because there's still an 18 and a half inch barrel. Correct. The CSC is the place to go to be able to fire some of the guns that we as Canadians are prohibited from possessing. The friendly and knowledgeable staff will walk you through all of the safety protocols, explain the necessary rules to follow, and set you up to enjoy some of the exotic firearms that are available at the range. It's an exciting way to experience these firearms in a safe environment. For more information on the Calgary Shooting Centre and the products they offer for sale and rent, please go to theshootingcentre.com. Today's tip is how to legally transport your restricted firearm, let's say to and from the shooting range. Transport gets a little dicey. Here's my disclaimer. Make sure that you check into the most recent regulations a couple of years ago when Bill C-42, uh, the Common Sense Firearms Licensing Act, received royal assent. The transportation requirements changed and now it looks like they're changing again. Hey, by the time you're seeing this, they could have already changed again. So make sure that you call 1-800-731 4,000, which is the Canadian Firearms Program, and make sure that your knowledge is up to date. I don't know when you're gonna be watching this, so it's your responsibility to do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna limit the discussion on ATTs, or authorizations to transport. Those seem to be the regulations that they keep tinkering back and forth with, as if that has an effect on criminal behavior with firearms, which clearly it doesn't, but nonetheless. So we're gonna talk about how you physically prepare your firearms for legal transport from your home to the range, and we'll talk about the paperwork in general. Number one, I have to have my firearm. I'm gonna take it to the range. I gotta make sure it's unloaded. So I remove the magazine if there was a magazine in there. Run the action. I'm gonna lock the action open. I'm gonna do a look and a touch. I always do it a couple of times because it costs me nothing to check a few times. And now I know for sure this thing is not loaded. Um, I'm gonna put a secure locking device on the firearm itself. Okay, I like cables. That's a, a thing that I'm into rather than trigger locks throw it in a securely locked container that cannot be easily broken into. That's a storage regulation thing, not easily broken into. I think in the transportation regs, it's a securely locked container that cannot be opened up during transport or inadvertently opened up during transport. So anyway, securely locked container. The container has to be opaque, meaning you can't see through it. Okay, so no see-through containers. So unload it, secure locking device in a locked box. Ammunition in the box is okay. 
A little disclaimer here too. There's a bit of confusion that kind of swirls around whether ammunition in the box is okay. And I'll, I'm gonna give you the exact situation here. In the regulation, it doesn't say specifically that ammunition in the box is okay. But in the storage regulation, it actually says that it's specifically okay. But the law typically tells you what's not okay, right? The law is written in negative. It tells you what you shall not do. If the law told you what you can do, that would be some big law books, right? You know, it tells you all the things that you could do. So it doesn't specifically say that ammunition in the box is okay, but it doesn't say that it's not. By virtue of that, I'm gonna say that it's, that it's okay. But again, the responsibility is on you to find out what the latest interpretation at the Canadian Firearms Program is at the time. So unloaded secure locking device in a locked case. If you get pulled over, you need three pieces of information. Number one, you need your PAL, which is the original card that you got in the mail when you got your license. Number two, you need a registration certificate for each restricted firearm that you're carrying with you. Okay, and that's a that's a paper, little piece of paper registration certificate. Photocopies are okay for the registration certificate. And number three, you need your authorization to transport. Now, right now, while we're filming this, it actually is a piece of paper still, even though a law was passed to, or a change to the law was passed to say you don't need to keep the physical piece of paper with you. But when you get your PAL, it comes attached to a large piece of paper. If you guys think of uh, like a credit card, right? It comes glued to it. Well, if you read at the bottom of that paper, the bottom third, it says that you must have that piece of paper to present to law enforcement, um, to a peace officer upon request. And part of that, if you flip it over, is your ATT. It shows all of the, the conditions of where you can transport that firearm. So you must have that with you. Not a lot of people know that. That's probably the least known regulation that I'm aware of. So. That ATT, we're gonna call that the ATT, which is that piece of paper. A photocopy of that is okay too, all right? The registration certificate for the firearm that you're carrying with you and your PAL. So that's what you need. So hopefully that helps. We're gonna make a, a separate video and talk about ATTs because it's such a, a, a big topic. But other than that, that's what we got for you today. Hopefully that helps. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. The Mission and District Rod and Gun Club in Mission, BC was the host for a Project Maple Seed training clinic. The MDRGC's mission is to cultivate the conservation of all wildlife, to promote good sportsmanship, and to educate youth in the art of handling all sports equipment on the range and in the field. Well, I'm Rick Hattigbeck. I'm one of the directors and uh, instructors of Project Maple Seed. I am a competitive shooter. I shoot a number of disciplines. My primary discipline is uh, service rifle, so that's typically 100 to 500 meters, and also CQB or, or close quarter battle, which is from 25 to 100 meters. And also I'm an IPSC competitor and uh, PRS and long range precision competitor. I've been using firearms off and on for about 10 years, but uh, competitively about five years, which kind of coincides with my involvement with uh, Appleseed and Mapleseed. When I was looking for really instruction, you know, I had, I had buddies at the range and I had YouTube University. And uh, ultimately I started doing some, some Google searches and, and uh, found Project Appleseed. Yeah, so Project Maple Seed is a 100% volunteer run, uh, non-profit organization whose goal is to basically take uh, civilian marksmanship instruction and uh, bring it across country to Canadians. In part two of Project Maple Seed, we experience an entire day of training with the main purpose of developing fundamental marksmanship skills as well as the safe handling of firearms. Project Maple Seed has specific minimum equipment requirements and is open to all calibers and sight types, including scopes. And uh, this is our second year of operation. We, uh, we started this up um, last year, and uh, we were planning to have four events, but due to the overwhelming uh, response and uh, the, the great support that CTFR has provided as the national sponsor, we were able to expand that from four events to 25 events, covering Alberta all the way to uh, New Brunswick. Our main objective is to provide Canadians with affordable and effective access to Mark's Pitch Up training and also provide a, a foundation for local groups to start their own Maple Seed events and, and maintain that, uh, that program of instruction on their own without us necessarily being involved. So as, as we say in Maple Seed, we might be the spark, but uh, ultimately the, the local groups, the local shooters and the local instructors are going to be the fuel that maintains this program. No! You are finished, make the rifle safe.
Prep five. So usually we, we like to see between 10 and 15 people at an event. Uh, okay. Usually we'll have uh, three to five instructors um, on duty kind of working the lines, helping people um, get comfortable and then understand kind of the layers of, of instruction that we provide as, as part of our marksmanship instruction. I think there are many uh, people from many walks of life that, that are uh, apprehensive or unsure about the sports. At Project Maple Seed, we, we see new, old, experienced shooters. I think everyone can benefit. I think the, the people owe it to themselves to try the sports out and, and see what it's all about before they, they make a judgment on, on, its, its, on its impact or value toward uh, society. Even if there's something you do not, you don't think you would you would like or something, I still think everyone should have an opportunity to explore it or just to try it. So many people I know that have had an aversion or fear because that's the way they were raised. They almost have a have a, a, a phobia of anything to do with firearms. And then when you take them and show the mechanics of that, take them and realize that uh, how disciplined it, it can be and, and such, you can really help open open the conversation. For the responsible uh, gun owner or person who's curious to see, this is an excellent uh, venue, a, a, a range. You, you go to a, a certified range. If you've never touched a firearm, you go with, go with a friend who could show you the pieces or an organization like this that will take a right through the fundamentals. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca. I think if, if, if you look at the, the high-level competitors in, in uh, shooting sports, you'll find that they have a very uh, organized uh, mental process and they're able to manage stress well. Uh, and I'm not sure whether shooting helps them manage it or people that are able to manage shoot well, but certainly there's a relationship in between those two uh, mental and physical uh, management capabilities and performance. The day begins with registration, introductions, and a safety briefing. After the safety protocols have been addressed, all the shooters take part in a baseline test to assess their current proficiency. From there, the six key shooting fundamentals are covered to begin the lessons. So the six steps are sight alignment, just make sure it's, it's centered. Sight picture, this is where we overlay what we're looking through to what we're looking at, okay? Respiratory pause, focus, two-parter. Focus your eye on the front sight or reticle. Focus your mind on keeping the front sight or reticle on the target. Number five, squeezing the trigger. So everyone take out your, your trigger trainer, okay? Number six is follow through. Just like you have a follow through in golf, follow through in bowling, follow through in archery, there's follow through in uh, marksmanship, rifle marksmanship, very important. The focus of Project Maple Seed is to address the human factors in improving accuracy and therefore no support or aids other than slings are allowed. Facing outward on the outside. So he'll slide his arm through above his bicep as high as he can and then cinch it up. So this point of instruction is two parts. One is how to get into the loop sling. The second, how to effectively interact with that loop sling in a prone position to give you a stable shooting platform. Right, that's part one. The goal of Project Maple Seed is to expose shooters to methods that work and to give them the tools needed to improve and build upon that foundation. Now he's going to guide himself downward with the opposite hand and gently descend earthwards. What the sling is doing is it's doing two things. One, it's creating tension so that the stock is making a consistent uh, fourth point of contact with your shoulder. And two, because it wraps around the wrist, it's also channeling the force straight back. Okay, it's actually a pivot point. Number two, we want to get the elbow under the rifle. Elbow under the rifle. And then now put your hand on the uh, grip. I've got a firm social grip. It's not a man crusher grip. It's not a wet sponge grip. It's basically the grip you have when you're waiting for a fish to bite, not when the fish has bitten, right? 99.9% .9 of the rifles that people have do not fit them unless you've got a cheek pad or an adjustable cheek riser. 
Okay. What that means is you've got inconsistent weight on the stock, which means what? Inconsistent performance. A, getting into loop sling. B, building a steady hold factors for prone. And then C, checking rifle fill. Okay. One of the final activities is to be retested on the range to assess how the skills acquired during the day have improved the overall accuracy. This is a great way to clearly see the progress from the beginning of the course. The ultimate goal of a maple seed is to score 210 points or better on a 40 shot course that has 250 possible points. The reward for this great achievement is the coveted Maple Seed Rifleman's Patch. No matter what the individual goals, the excellent instruction at any Project Maple Seed Clinic is something that every marksman can learn from and aid in the never-ending pursuit of excellence. Well, I think I think part of what we love to do is it's it's a, it's a passion. It's, it's similar. It's no different from anyone, let's say, archery or race car driving or bowling. You know, it's it's simply a, a sport that we do that we love, we enjoy, and it takes skill, discipline. It's, it's not really just turning money into noise. It's it's really about um, uh, mastering skills and managing your mental discipline to be able to to perform. So again, it's 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 a discipline like any other sport, and I think uh, any of the other sportsmen would be equally upset if, if their sport were outlawed for for any other reason than than um, valid ones. To learn all about Project Maple Seed, please visit mapleseedriflemen.com.